The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Media Services, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Cheryl Hentz along with Dan Rylance. I'm very pleased to welcome back a couple of folks who have been here many times in the past and, and we're always happy to have them. Um, Cheryl Rosenthal and Joni Geiger from the Oshkosh Area Humane Society here tonight to talk about a number of things. The first thing we're going to talk about is if you've uh, read the paper in recent days, um, you know, they've kind of changed their mission a little bit. They've got uh, a brand new policy, very exciting, um, groundbreaking for them, and uh, we're going to talk about that because it uh, is critical to um, saving more lives of, of animals in our community. And then later on we'll talk about some of the other things going on at the shelter and so forth. So anyway, welcome. Thanks for being Thanks. here. Welcome. Thanks for having us. It's always good to have you guys. Um, so um, we, we read in the paper about this new policy that you guys have. Um, you are a life-saving, I don't remember the exact wording here, you're a life-saving facility. I, I pretty much had right. that right. <laughs> life-saving <laughs> shelter, yep. Yeah. She's good. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess basically that means that you're not going to be euthanizing animals for reasons of space. That's correct. D is there a more broad meaning to that or is yeah. that just um, it, it in a it's nutshell? It's actually pretty simple. It, okay. it really does come down to that because you know we're still a full-service shelter which oh. means that we take everything that comes to our door. Uh, we don't turn anything away, and um, so, you know, obviously that creates some complications sometimes, especially at this time of the year because it's so busy. It's kitten season. And so mm -hmm. what will happen is, you know, you may get eight in and only adopted three out that day. So you're looking for cage space. And so in the past, honestly, we had to look at that and we had to make really, really tough decisions and we had to euthanize animals for space. Um, you know, it's one thing to euthanize an animal because um, it's it's unstable or it's aggressive or it's something that you don't want to put out in the public because it's um, just a danger, and and that's reasonable. But to euthanize an animal just because there's no room um, just never made sense to any of us. And so we we just we just said that's it. We're done. We're not going to do this anymore. We, you know, we're. We're people who love animals. We're we're in the business because of that, and and yet we're we're forced to make these types of decisions. And so we've just made that pledge, that commitment to say, no more. Right. Well, Joni went to a seminar uh, mm -hmm. or a conference in a conference. Vegas, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, when she came back, she was pretty pumped. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she thought she I was didn't say not because <laughs> she was done, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she. Um, came back all excited about she came I'll never forget she came in my office and she said how would you feel about uh, spending more time saving lives than talking about euthanasia and I'm like well that certainly works for me and uh, she went to this uh, program and she thought she was going to learn about uh, increasing, increasing adoptions, adoptions. Mm -hmm. and what it really turned out to be was how to uh, save more lives and there's many facets to this new mission, Cheryl, and everybody at our shelter, every staff person has rededicated themselves to becoming a life-saving shelter. But in order to do this, we can't do it alone. Um, we can take in the animals, we can adopt out the animals, we can provide the medical care, we can do all these things, but we can't do any of it without the community backing us. So. Our goal is to become a life-saving shelter within a life-saving community. And so it means taking down our walls and inviting everybody in the community to help in any area that they can. Can you adopt? Can you foster? Can you maybe sponsor some spay-neuter surgeries? Can you help in donating food? And so we really need the, the community to also embrace this life-saving mission and to become part of it. Okay. Uh, 
Well, let's get into some of these things. Um, you know, you threw a lot out there, so let's, uh, I guess, maybe take it uh, one step at a time here. Um, you know, you mentioned spay and neuter, um, and, and I know that, I, I don't know if it was a comment attached to the article on this or if it was, because you have a blog on yep. Northwestern's yes, website, I do. and maybe it was on there. Um, someone mentioned, well, maybe you'd be able to adopt more animals out if you did low-cost spay and neuter. Mm -hmm. And I know from having lived in, in metropolitan cities that there are larger cities across the country that do have such programs. Do we have an official kind of program like that here? We don't, do we? Or do we, we do not. We, what, what we have done in the past, Cheryl, is because we recognize that. There's, there is no question about it. And, um, we know that spay and neuter is critical mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. reducing overpopulation. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is it's extraordinarily costly. Um, someone has to pay for those services. Mm -hmm. And so what we have done in the past is we've applied for grants and um, in most cases have received those grants. But basically when that grant money runs out, there is there's nothing left over in order to do that. So um, so we're able to do it through that way, but, but no, there is not like a facility that people can go to okay. and um, have this done. But there are things that you know, sure. can be done to well, help we, lower and that Well, and we refer a people bit. to a lot of different areas that, you know, we don't do it our, in our area alone with the exception of the grant money. But, for instance, they, they can go down to the Dane County Humane Society, and we, and we recommend that mm. people do that. So they can get a cat or a dog spayed at a much lower reduced price, but they have to drive to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, with the cost of gas, you know, by the time you're done with that, are you right. really saving any money? Yeah. Now, I know when you've adopted animals out in the past, you always gave a certificate um, that would help reduce the sure. cost with one of the local veterinarians who honored it, and most of them, I think, did, if not all. Um, but do you still do that? Not so much. Um, okay. And the reason is, is because obviously we have a surgery room in the shelter okay. that we're able to alter our old animals. Um, veterinarians, bless their hearts, come in and they donate their time. But, okay. but again, that's that's at the veterinarian's discretion sure. as to when they come in. So, but but most frequently, those animals that are available at the shelter for adoption are spayed and neutered before they leave. Okay. On rare occasions, you know, an animal will leave not altered, but then we do like you said, the coupon and, and people. Sure. Right. Well, and then the cost attached to that, I mean, here we have the veteran, you know, we have a few veterinarians coming in and donating this, their time and their services, but you have to remember, <coughs> we provide staff people mm -hmm. then to help anesthetize these animals um, and to mm -hmm. stay with them. All and the drugs. All mm -hmm. the supplies, mm -hmm. the autoclave, packing the surgical packs. Mm -hmm. Sure. There's a lot additional expense to, to the, those surgeries than just the veterinarian and so people we need to look at the big picture of you know uh, people and supplies well and that's probably where part of your adoption fee is going toward too is oh, absolutely you know, against yeah, um, that. and and I truly we we don't have we're a nonprofit we mm -hmm. don't recover anything in our adoption fee I mean you know if we were to get if we were to charge the adoption fee as to what we've actually put into the animal mm -hmm. you know people wouldn't they wouldn't adopt you know, yeah. so it, it, but that's not the purpose. The purpose isn't to get money or to make money, um, although you know you need that to operate. But because being a nonprofit, our we're providing a service to these animals and to the community. Sure. And one other thing uh, with regard to fees, adoption fees, um, I, I read another comment uh, either on your blog or on um, the Northwestern's story uh, blog somewhere. Um, but someone mentioned about um, the adoption fees. And I don't know what the adoption fees are anymore, but you know, to suggest that the adoption fee be lowered, I, I mean, yeah, you might move more animals that way, but you're huh. going to be losing money. <laughs> How much lower can we go, Cheryl? <laughs> <laughs> They're free. <You> know, <laughs> well, you know, I, I mean, and and the other thing, I guess, the way I look at this is, if someone can't afford the adoption fee are they going to be able to afford any medical treatment that the animal may need? I mean, you know, there are certain costs that you guys are incurring right. to, you know, get this animal spayed and neutered right. um, and, and so forth. So, so here again, it's kind of a two-way street. We're doing as much as we can, right. but, you know, nothing in life is free. Right. Well, in a perfect world, too, Cheryl, I mean, yes, you want everybody to take their cat or dog to the vet, but the reality is is that there's a lot of individuals out there that truly love their pets. You know, they're not bad owners, but maybe financially they can't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But, you know, you do have programs like your buddy program, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we'll get into some of that later. And uh, I also want to touch on the cost of adoption later. But, um, you know, Dan and I have some questions concerning this, this new mission of yours. So before we get too far off the beaten yeah. track, um, you know, how, how is this different, I guess, from what the shelter's already done in the past? Because I know some shelters, you know, they have a hard and fast rule that animal is there for five days or seven days, and it's automatic, automatically euthanized if it's not adopted out. You guys have never taken never. quite that position. Never. We, um, you know, I pride ourselves on, on the fact that we've always been very unique. We've always looked at every animal individually. We feel as though we've given animals opportunities to get adopted, and, and basically, we don't euthanize unless we feel it's necessary because, again, it's an issue where mm -hmm. it's an animal we're not going to place out in the public. However, in the space issue, that's really, that's when it really gets tough. That's when it's like, okay, we need the space. You look at your population. And this is a tough, think about doing this. Think about being an animal lover and saying, this is really tough. How do I do this? Um, I need a cat cage. Okay. I've got an eight-year-old cat here. I've got a one-year-old cat here. The eight-year-old cat is not altered, it's not spayed, it's not neutered. The one-year-old is, okay. The eight-year-old is very sweet, very loving, very affectionate, okay. Has come from a, a nice home, and the, the one-year-old maybe not so much, very, very, you know, active and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. And so you look at those and you say, who do you choose? <laughs> and who do you choose? Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a perception thing. It's one mm -hmm. of those things where, unfortunately, you have to make really tough decisions in, in a shelter environment and that's where it really got hard and it was very grinding year after year after year because you're at you're in a, such an you're in such an unusual situation because you're not selling you know chairs and furniture and I mean these are live breathing animals that you're really invested in and and so the difference is is that we've always agonized over those choices but now we've just said no we're not doing that's it. right um, and it, 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 we just, it needs to stop. Right. I mean, p animals shouldn't have to die just because they're born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. so part of that is, you know, um, again, getting the community to be part of this and to know, to have a better understanding. I, I think I did an average. We average 113 animals coming in in a month. That's cats. Cats. Mm. And our adoptions are at 68. Well, we would love to adopt out more cats, you know, and make those numbers go up. <laughs> but when you have that month after month, if you get in, in 113, and that's an average, 113, yeah. and you're only adopting out 68, at the end of the year, you have a, a surplus. And, you know, can you imagine, Cheryl, if you went home tonight and there were 10 cats on your back step? <laughs> And oh, tomorrow night, my dogs would be so mad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the next night, there's ten more cats. Yeah. And then the next night, there's ten more cats. And by the end of the week, you got seventy cats. I'd, she I'd, she wouldn't be an eye in our show. I'd be spending all my time um, taking care of the cats, and then I'd be known yeah. as what your wife was, the where cat you guys woman. used to live. Yeah, the the cat, cat woman. Yeah. Yeah. Cat yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I do. I think we should reiterate that primarily our our space issue is not with dogs. It's with cats mm -hmm. that we see three times as many cats as we do dogs, and and people that work at the shelter, we work there because we love animals, mm -hmm. and we we don't want to do this anymore. And so we're inviting the public um, to become part of the shelter, and be part of the placement, be part of this life-saving mission, okay. because we're we're doing everything that we can already to, um, you know, we've scrambled a lot of times where, okay, uh, it's five to six and we're supposed to be closing and somebody just brought us a litter of kittens and a mom and who can take them? Call a foster home, call a neighbor, call somebody, and, and we try to do that. But after a while, right. our, our resources are limited yeah. and so we need help. Okay, I'm <coughs> Help me with numbers here, just for how many cats did you euthanize last year? Any idea? Yeah, um, I just looked that up. Uh, 529. Okay. And you have 175 cats in the shelter now. That's what the article we said. Have 202. 202. 202. It's up. Yeah. 202. Okay. We check They're our numbers every day. Okay, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Okay. Let's say in three months you have 600 cats in the shelter. You know, this statement is unbelievably good and I we're on, we're on a life-saving mission we will not euthanize for space but what if this doesn't work what are we gonna at do? what point do you yeah. say 
that's yeah. why we are asking the community to help. This is, we're this not is, asking. We're, this we're, is a call to this action. Is a call. We this need is this. a call to action. This is yeah. a call to action. Okay. If you, because you're right, Dan. If if people don't step up, right, it won't work. Yeah. Right. And we, I want it to work. Yes. I don't mean right. that, but uh, I'm no. Thinking. But you're, but uh, and I'm glad you're clarifying that yeah. because that's one of the reasons we're on this show okay. is because we are asking people. We are doing a call to action. We are, we're not just inviting people. We're we're begging, begging. people. Okay. We're yeah. begging people to to come forward and say, I will foster for you. Okay. And in that, so that will help us. Just like Cheryl said, okay. you know, our walls are down now. We're expanding the shelter. Okay. 13,000 square feet is not big enough anymore. So we need the Oshkosh area to, okay. to step up and do that. And then not only will your wife take foster kitties for right. us, but she will help us get those particular kitties that she's fostering adopted. Maybe she, you know, invites the neighbors over, or she, you know, takes them, you know, takes them down to the sure. gas station and shows Every people there. Every student in class gets a yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that's exactly what we're talking about, Dan. Is uh, that <laughs> you, you, you? We're going to broaden our audience. We're going to broaden right. the number of people. You don't have to come in the shelter anymore to view animals. You can do that, right. you know. But they're not going to be doing it on their own. They're still going to be right. part of, you know, part of the shelter. You know, they're going to, you know, you're a foster home. You're going to hand out uh, an application for your kittens, but we're going to do the rest of it. We need you. We do you the adoption. We, you know, we, we process right. the application. We do everything like that. But we need you to house and socialize and and to advertise 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 these these kittens. And you know, we're so proud of the kittens that we have. I mean, to come to our shelter and get a kitten, you've got you get a cat or a kitten that's been well socialized. Mm -hmm. They've had a lot of medical care. And if they've been hand raised, I mean, what more? What more? And spayed and neutered. What more do people Female want? Leukemia tested. Yeah. Worm, worm. Distemper vaccinations. I mean, they're ready. Mm -hmm. This is a good model. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's ready. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And and are they all perfect? No, because we get some in with bumps and bruises, sure. and we do the best that we can. But we're hoping that we are living in a life saving community. That there are cat lovers out there like Joni and I and. Rhonda and Gretchen and all the people that work with us that feel the same that way, way that we do and instead of sitting there and going oh wow that's really nice that the shelter is going to do that instead of saying that they're going to say wow what can I do to help how can I help I want to save lives too okay. or instead of saying oh they euthanize animals there yeah we've used the term adoption and and, and a foster mm -hmm. uh, adoption to me means permanent and mm -hmm. foster, what are the parameters of, of, the, of the foster thing? I don't understand that. Okay. Um, you, c you say that you want to foster. Okay. And we get in a mom cat and five kittens. Okay. And we call you up and we say, Dan, we need a foster home. Okay. And we're going to need a foster home probably until these kittens are, we're going to need a foster home until these kittens are eight weeks old. Okay. And right now we think they're about three weeks old. Okay. Are you ready to put in the time? We're going to ask you to have a room of your own where you can isolate these animals away okay. from your other pets. Um, and we're going to give you all the supplies to take care of these cats, and this cat, mother cat and her kittens. So you want me to take the mother and the five? Yep, that. because, well, they're, they're only... <laughs> They're only just, three weeks old. They okay, need mama. Okay. They need their mama. Okay. And um, we're going to give you some training. We're going to tell okay. you this is what you look for. This is what you're going to feed them. And you're going to bring them in to us at such and such an age to get their distemper okay. vaccinations. And after the weeks have gone by, and we're going to encourage you to talk to your neighbors um, and maybe you know, talk to people here at the station, you know, gee, I've got kittens at my house, they're really cute, come and see them. Um, okay. Or you're going to call... pictures like Cheryl does, okay. you know. Yeah. <laughs> or you're going to call the shelter, or the shelter's going to call you and say, you know, your kittens are eight weeks old and we have an opening here at the shelter, we'd like you to bring your kittens back. Okay. And then you bring mom and the kittens back and they go up for adoption. And then you're ready, hopefully, to maybe take a week's vacation and then you're ready for litter number two. And you call me again. Yep, yeah. and we call you again. Okay. And that is why we need uh, we need about 50 foster homes. This is kind of like Father Carr's place in a way. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is I mean, this yeah. is kind of permanent home yeah. for yeah. somewhat lengthy time, but there'll always sure. be more because right. you'll always, right. always, always be more. And you can more. adopt if you want, yeah. but you know, I can't foster anymore because I adopt. 
Yeah. I, I flunk I flunk foster flunk, care yeah. all the time. <laughs> uh, thankfully, it's I flunk foster care for dogs. <laughs> uh, my kittens, I've always been able to give up uh, okay. and to home them. And you know, there's a reward in that. Sometimes people are like, "Oh, I'll get too attached. I could never do that." We're talking about 400 lives that you can be a part of placing out into the community to be happy, healthy little kittens running around making somebody else happy and then you can love them and give them back to us or put them in a new home and be ready for the next bunch. Okay. It isn't, yeah, sometimes it's a little hard to let go of them because you know there's, every animal has its personality but it's kind of like, okay, this was spun. I can't wait till the next group. And it isn't necessarily for everybody yeah. either. Yeah. Every foster home, though, won't necessarily be getting a mother and a litter, no. right? Oh, no. I mean, they oh, make it no. one. They, yeah. If they can only take on one, right. then right. that's yeah. all right. you're going right. to ask. And that's and why we need a variety. You know, yeah. and, and the, it, is, it isn't, it, I mean, it's kitten season, so that we see a majority of kittens. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's animals recovering from surgery that just need that little mm -hmm. bit of extra time, you know. And in some cases, it's dogs. You know, I, you know, we talk, we're talking about cats all the time, but I'll give you a perfect example. Our, our dog kennels right now are very full, mm -hmm. you know, because of the dogs that we took in recently. And, um, you know, we've got a couple of dogs that are a little under socialized and need a little special TLC, that type of thing. So going into a foster home would really benefit these dogs. You know, it doesn't mean that people have to keep them, but it means that they work with them. They work towards that goal of socializing. So, you know, foster homes is not just about, like, you're going to get, you know, a mom and babies. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you're absolutely right. You might get, you might get just two babies. Right. You might get, you know, somebody recovering from surgery. You might mm -hmm. get somebody that... Or it may be such a thing we call Dan and we say, Dan, we've got a mom and five kittens. And you say, well, you know, I'm going to be going out of town in a week. Mm -hmm. We're going to say, okay, thanks, Dan. We'll try you again. You know, how but about... But Dan can pick, too. Dan can say, I only want to do this. I don't want a mother and five. Right, I, exactly. I would like one. I would like right. one. one. Right. I'll, I'll right. foster one. I'll foster one. Okay. Right. Um, but when it comes to kitten season that we're in right now, no, we need those 50 homes. You need the and, mother and the five. And we, <laughs> we, you no, know, Joni said that we also foster dogs, but here again, our urgency is cats and kittens mm -hmm. because that's where we're having to euthanize for space, and that's what we want to stop doing. So... Um, and think about it, cats breed, you know, mm -hmm. faster. There's three times as many cats in our building than there are dogs. Yeah. And, you know, we'll, we're going to touch on this briefly, you know, there is, a, there is a sense out there that people do value dogs more so than cats. You know, um, for people like us, not, not, we don't see that, but, mm -hmm. but the reality is, is there's probably some truth to that. Well, how does this, um, how does this work then um, with respect to the city ordinances? Because, <laughs> for Thank people who, who don't know, I mean, I don't think you can have more than five animals. Right. The most is three dogs, and then it would be two cats, um, or you can have five cats right. and mm -hmm. no dogs. Right. But the most is five dogs. Er, <laughs> I'm just contradicting <laughs> what I just said. The most is five, five animals. animals total when you live within the city limits. Um, so, say Dan already has a couple cats. Mm -hmm. And now you're wanting him to take this mom and her five, five kittens. kittens. Wow, that's a yeah. house full, and that puts him over the city yeah. limits. So but that's that not work? him. Well, but I'll tell you, not the city his. has been very, very decent in working mm -hmm. with us on this, and and um, I, I can't say enough about it. They they've actually written that into their statutes. So if you're fostering for okay. the Humane Society, yeah. um, that's considered a temporary situation and um, so they will not look at that as an ownership situation. Just the Humane Society or any kind of a bona fide it's rescue? Any, any, okay, any because bona fide I know some rescue. They, they didn't write it in just groups. specifically for us, but okay. fostering for, you know, life-saving groups or rescues okay. or those okay. types of things. So well, that's yeah. that's very more, good to know. One more question sure, on this. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Um, what sort of background checks do you have for adoption and for foster? We have an application an that application they have to fill out. Right. And then we are also going to be setting up an actual training that we're okay. going to be doing for these people. Um, you know, not that, well, you have to do it our way or, you know. 
but but some guidelines. I mean, sure. we we right. certainly you know kind of free for all. if you've never if you've never had small kittens in your home before and somebody gets terribly sick, we want you to know here's the steps that you take. Sure. You call this person first or this this try this first. Yeah. You know, we don't want them you know rushing up to right. the referral center or you know so they're going to have some training, but it, it's it's not going to be like six weeks of training okay. before you can foster. And you won't wait two or three weeks to find out normally on your application process. Oh, no, no, oh, I mean, no. Oh, uh, you oh, if you're a foster? Today, yeah. You're fostering tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> See, they, they want they, you, Dan. They need they help. Want you. <laughs> if, you bring it, if you bring it in the morning, we might be calling you in the <laughs> afternoon. I see. Or you, you might be... You, you know, deliver too, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I was going to say, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and that's... We laugh at this, but this yeah. is true. Yeah. We are really committed to this. Yeah, we will do everything it takes to stop the euthanasia for space. Yeah. We will do everything it takes. Is your screening different for an adoptable home as opposed to a foster home, or do you have the same kind of criteria that you it's look for? It's probably pretty close. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's a different application, mm -hmm. but it's really, you know, and that's the other thing. That's the other side of the coin there is the adoption process has also been shortened up a little bit. We are no longer asking for references. Um, hmm. We are, we are, you know, we're, we're doing some checks, you know, of course, you know, but we're really, putting our focus on we're trusting people to do the right thing. We really, we have to. Mm -hmm. we, we really do in order to make this happen. Um, one of the things that I learned in this, in this workshop that I went to is, and I thought this was extraordinarily interesting, 67% of, there was a poll taken, and 67% of these people that were asked to participate in the poll said, I would definitely adopt from a shelter or a rescue. I would do that. I would like to do that. Um, however, Nationally, only 25% of all people get their animals from a shelter or a rescue. So there's a huge gap in between there. And then when they asked and said, why not? How come you didn't? You wanted to, but how come you didn't? The number one reason was it's too difficult. It's too hard. They make it too hard for you. And then the second reason was is that they didn't get back to you in a timely basis. Mm -hmm. So we looked at it and said, how can we be better at that then? So what we did look at streamlining. We said, let's not make it so hard for mm -hmm. people then. Mm -hmm. Let's trust people to do the right thing. And so that's one of the reasons that we opted to do that. So if you call us, you contact us, you're going to hear something within 24 hours. We're not necessarily saying we're going to approve that adoption mm -hmm. with 24 hours, but you're going to hear something. You know, and within 48, it's highly likely you might be adopting. Mm -hmm. So if you're not checking references then, uh, you guys, who, who are you contacting? Um, are you contacting veterinarian? Oh yeah, still if they have, if they have pets, yep. if they have current pets, we do check to see if their pets are current on their vaccinations or if they're spayed or neutered. Mm -hmm. We also want to know a little bit about them. Do you rent or own your home? Mm -hmm. And if you do rent, we are going to check with your landlord or ask you for some proof of you know that it's okay for you to have a pet. You know, are there any? Uh, limitations, you know, like, oh yeah, my landlord said I can have a dog, and then we call and we find out, yep, you can have a dog, but this the eighty pound lab you want, no, you <laughs> know, it, you know, it's a thirty pound mm -hmm. limit or something like that. So we still check with the landlords, um, and we try to spend more time talking with people, you know, and learning about them on a personal level rather than asking, you know, uh, their friends about them. Yeah. Let's, you know. Let's talk to them and, and learn so it's about a them. communication thing. It's mm -hmm. one of those things where you need to converse with people who are prospective adopters and find out what do you want. You know, right. like really have a conversation with them right. and find out what their needs are. And, and then, then you match make, you know, mm -hmm. based right. on lifestyle and based on what they're looking for. You know, th and that's where our expertise comes in. That we know our animals, and so we know Buffy's this, and we know Muffy's this, and so the fact is that Dan comes in and he's he's interested in an animal, and and you know he, you know so so I can say you know Dan come and look at Muffy. I think you're gonna like Muffy. You know right. Muffy sounds like might be a good fit for you, and so that's one of the things that as a as a responsible humane society, it isn't just like come on in, you know, sign the dotted line, and where's your money? Right. Well, and I think it's important for people to know too that. We are a resource center. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our staff has been have been working with animals and with behavior for several years. And so when we make suggestions, uh, we're really considering the existing pets at home, the entire family, and the pet that we're placing in that home. And so we're, we're, we're going to make recommendations. And sometimes we may tell somebody, you know what? this animal isn't the right fit for your home and we're not going to adopt that animal to you and we may recommend something else 
Uh, so we have that obligation also mm -hmm. to... We have, we have an obligation to... We have two clients. You know, we have the animal and, of course, the prospective adopter. So you, and obviously that's, that's where that fine line comes in. You know? Well, and, you know, if I can just interject something here, not that I'm the expert, but, I mean, I have worked with you guys a lot of years. Um, I work with other rescue groups as well. And, you know, that's why when someone is surrendering an animal, um, whether it be to a shelter or a rescue group, it is so critically important that they be honest about Absolutely. why they are surrendering that animal. Absolutely. You know, if you're surrendering it because it has a behavior issue, be honest about that because that's only going to help you guys that's or right. whatever shelter or rescue group it may be do a better job of being able to place that animal with the best home for right. it. I think the hardest animals you know? for us to place are those that are strays because we have, you have no history, you have mm -hmm. nothing to work with. Yeah. Right. And, you know, you're just well, making guesses. One of the things that we are doing now, Cheryl, that um, we hadn't done so much before is that if someone is surrendering an animal and it is a behavior issue, we're going to give them an option and say, look, we have some information to share with you. Would you be willing to work with your animal if we can give you the right information, mm -hmm. if we can give you the tools that you're going to need to fix this problem? Because really, by the time people get to that point where they're surrendering an animal, they're down to their last resort. They think they've tried everything. And chances are, you know, they've listened to the neighbors, they've talked to, you know, but, but they maybe haven't really gone to a source that is much more knowledgeable. And so what we find out in that, in that surrender process is that you know what this isn't really so hard to fix but you you have to have the commitment level to do it yeah you know you have to be able to say you know okay let's talk house training and let's let's give you the tools to do that right well and you know as, as much as people may think that they know everything I, I got to I got to say from firsthand experience I mean I've been around animals all my life yeah, but cool. when we got a puppy last year and we had a little separation anxiety <laughs> issue going on I called you guys I mean not that I was ever in a position to to give that dog up I just you know once I take on an animal it's it's a lifetime commitment for me but um, you know I said I don't I've never had an animal with separation anxiety I don't know what to do here what do I do you guys recommended things um, I got a behaviorist in and you know so we got the problem solved but you know just little things that I had never thought of they recommended to do right. uh, between you guys and, and the behaviorist and it was wonderful you it's know? kind of um, we help you and other behaviorists can help you become a good detective mm -hmm. and figure out why is my pet doing this or maybe what am I doing that's causing my pet to do this and we can fix it yep. and you know behavior problems don't happen overnight so people need to understand they're not going to be fixed overnight but oftentimes the majority of people don't want to give up their pet they really don't want to and again if they would think of using us as a resource before they've tied that knot and are barely hanging on um, maybe we can you know get to them in time where they're not so frustrated mm -hmm. that no I can't work with this anymore I'm done is this a national trend what you're doing you're seeing it, it, it you're right Dan it uh -huh. is it, it, it we're seeing it more and more frequently now um, you know there's a, and we should probably touch upon that because there's <coughs> going to be some issues where people are going to see this and they're going to go they're going no kill Right, okay, right. Um, but what we're going is life saving. We're really focusing on life saving. So, so yes, you are seeing this kind of come through the country here, where where shelters are really looking at their numbers and just, you know, because we're t honestly, guys, we're just we're tired of it. We just we don't want to do it anymore. And and you know, we we never. I'll be honest with you. It never occurred to me, and I, I I'm ashamed to say that, but it never occurred to me to open this up to the community and say be volunteers for us, be foster homes, help us to, you know, manage these numbers so that we don't have to do it. And, um, you know, it, so it was, when I went to that workshop, it was a revelation for me. I was like sitting there going, we can do that, we can do that, we can do yeah. that. Okay. You know, um, so it, it, it just fit. It was a fit yeah. for us. And so um, we're jumping in with both feet and, you know, we're, we're in the thick of it right now because this is kitten season. Are there any other humane societies in the Fox River Valley that have done None this. that I know of. So this is kind of a, you're sort of the beginning of yeah, this. Yeah, this is brand new for us, okay. you know, in this, and I'm, I don't even know if this is uh, in the state. I don't even, I think wow. we might be the first in the state. I think that's, that's important for our viewers yeah. to know that. Yeah, yeah. I think this yeah. is, 
this is really, and I'm hoping that this is a, if we can do this, if, if, if we, not just mm -hmm. the shelter, but the community can do this, think of what we could, how many animals we could save. Mm -hmm. Think of th think of the impact, and and there's you know Cheryl talked about the number of things that are involved in this, and it isn't just about you know foster homes, but it is about spay and neuter. It is about making awareness, making people aware that you know these numbers wouldn't exist if if the spay and neuter was in place. You know, it's about trap neuter release. It's about you know doing all all that you can to to make it work um, for everybody. So yeah, we're we're excited. I every time I talk about it, I get excited. <laughs> how, how many foster homes do you have now, and what's your goal? Do you have a goal for? Uh, oh yeah, you do. Yeah, I I want to have a minimum of fifty. Fifty okay. foster homes. Fifty, in, in 50 foster homes. But you know what? I'm going to take a hundred. I'm going to take a hundred and fifty. <laughs> I'm going to take. I'm going to take whatever it's going to sure. take okay. to make it work. Um, but and we probably have, I would say, probably around eighteen right okay. now. So the big push is to get that minimum 32 more foster yeah, homes. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. We need those foster homes. And yes. we have 65 cats in foster right now. Yeah. 65 kittens, um, and of various ages and stages of life, and you know, um, and but we can't. Cheryl mentioned that you know, like when the you know eight weeks and you know we've got some space. The truth of the matter is, guys, we're never going to have space. Not not yeah. at this time of the year. We're not yeah. going to have yeah. the space. And that's why we need other people out there campaigning for these kittens that's right. and these cats to save their lives. And, you know, we also need to remember, you know, we're, we're not producing these cats and kittens. Yeah. They're coming from the community. So... <laughs> Um, That's an important clarification. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it's, you know, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> you know, it's it really like, is. Uh, so here again, yeah. we, you know, we're taking them in, but we need the community to come in yeah. that other door and take them out the front door, yeah. and that's what we want. And uh, you know, if you, uh, you know, if you work, at, uh, I'm going to give you an example. You work at a factory, okay, and and you, um, you know, and you're a foster home for us. Mm -hmm. You know, ask somebody. You know, I'd like to bring my my kittens down to the break room for a couple hours. Is is that okay? Mm -hmm. You know, and we'll provide the cage, and they can bring them in, and be, you know, people are going to be touching mm -hmm. and petting. Oh, they're so cute, mm -hmm. you know. And but you're going to generate some excitement about it, and it's highly likely that in that in that facility, you're going to find somebody that's interested in adopting. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have four or five people who say, you know what, they're so cute. They, my, oh my, you know, I'd love to do this. And so the application's right there. They can fill it out, you know. So those kittens never, ever come to the shelter. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, and, and again, I think it's really nice um, and uh, beneficial to this program and its success that the city is is totally making agree. exceptions yeah. totally agree. Um, within the ordinance framework uh, sure. of the limit of animals that you can have. Uh, so if someone is interested in, you know, being a foster home, uh, what do they do? They can visit our website and... and we've uh, been putting that up throughout the, the okay. course they of the They can show. visit our website and uh, go to uh, volunteering, uh, which is one of the headers on our website, and there is a, another heading foster care mm -hmm. and there is an actual foster care application right online okay. um, or they can stop into the shelter if they want to and pick up an application okay. um, or they can email or, Sharon or they can email Sharon uh, who is our volunteer coordinator and that's Sharon S-H-A-R-O-N at O-A-H-S dot O-R-G and uh, we'll get the information to them and okay. uh, and I think it's important for people to know that if you are thinking about becoming a foster home uh, one of the criteria for a foster home is the ability to be able to keep the animal that you are fostering separate from your, if you have cats, mm -hmm. you want to be able to keep your cats away from the cat that you are fostering. So if you have a spare bedroom or maybe a family den or something that you can use for that animal alone. Um, it's not like when people foster dogs, a lot of times the dogs are all together. Uh, with cats, it's a little bit different. So that's one of the things we like people to look at is that we need a quiet. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you have to have a place where you can isolate. And, and people, you know, it's like, oh, I don't want to isolate those animals. That's, that's a horrible thing to do to them. And it's like cats 
don't look at isolation the same way that you and I do. Cats are in a room, they, it's like, oh wow, I'm in my own little territory, I can control it. Mm, they'll uh, probably relish it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, how many days would any of us like to be locked in a room all by ourselves with all of our <laughs> amenities <laughs> and be able to relax for the entire day? Many. So, many. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, it, but here again, it doesn't take a large amount of time uh, to care for these animals, yes, it's going to interrupt your schedule, but the rewards, um, I, I just, the few litters that I have fostered, uh, it's so fun to see them grow up. And yes, you know, you get a little teary when they go to their new owners, but then you also get the happily ever after stories or, oh, my mother is, you know, so much happier now that she has an animal in the house or, or the letters that you get. It's so rewarding. It's, mm -hmm. it's well worth it. Um, and it's a great way if, if somebody doesn't have any pets and, well, I don't know if I want to have a cat or not, they can foster a cat and when it's ready to go, they can give it back and, well, thanks for the experience, but I, you know. And they can say, I saved a life. Mm -hmm. That's I right. Saved a life. Or I saved six lives or, you know, I mean, and that in itself is reward enough. Sure, sure. Anything else on this particular program that we should touch on before we move There's on? There's lots, but no, we'll move on. All <laughs> right. Okay. Well, we touched on, on adoption fees before. And, you know, what, what are your fees right now for adopting an animal? Uh, they're all over the board. And, yeah, I and thought it so. It, yeah, it really depends on what you're looking at, too, you know, because obviously, you know, we have our Home at Last program, and we're going to talk about cats again, mm -hmm. but Home at Last program is basically three or older, a cat, the fee is waived. There's no charge. These animals are spayed, neutered, uh, current on vaccinations. There's all these things right. that are in place. And you literally do not pay an adoption fee. Right. And the, the fee is sponsored by the home at last. Correct. And so here again, if somebody, well, I, I can't foster, I can't adopt, maybe they would like to make a donation uh, to the, the home, home at last, last program, program right. to sponsor the adoption you know, fee case. of of a cat that's three years or uh, older. Kittens um, or adult cats that are under that age are going to be $50. And then if you want a second, and we always <laughs> encourage that, <laughs> <laughs> would be an additional $10. And that's our buddy system, That's obviously. the buddy program. Uh, when it comes to dogs, a um, little bit different ball game. It depends on if the animal is spayed or neutered. It's going to be $75. If it's not, and then, of course, we give you that, you know, the certificate and those types of things. An animal that's spayed might be 100 it, And honestly, if it's what we call a highly desirable animal, it might be 150 50 and those dogs are considered heroes to the other dogs that so for instance let's say I've got a golden retriever mm -hmm. and that's going to be $150 okay now that's that's you know for us that's a little bit on the steeper side mm -hmm. for an adoption fee but that money because we're charging a little bit more for that dog actually subsidizes okay. that eight-year-old lab mix that's in kennel eight mm -hmm. who's 35. Mm -hmm. so that's what some of that comes from is that you know we we look at those prices and we look at the adoption fees and base it on that mm -hmm. so um and we really try to work with people regarding those types of things 150 for is not a bad price for a dog like that for not when the they're spayed and neutered yeah, heartworm tested yeah. distemper it, it is. treated yeah, for fleas right. yeah, yeah. But as you know, our area is rather conservative, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you might be able to get 250 in some other areas, but, um, you know, our you areas... You mean we're frugal. <laughs> <laughs> we're frugal people. We're frugal, okay. yeah. Okay. We're well, but frugal. if you go to, um, you know, to a, a breeder, uh, you know, a oh, responsible yeah. breeder, they're going to pay a lot more than that. Yeah. Right. Um, Absolutely. So, or if and they get some an animal, groups are well, charging more than that, too. But even if you go to the newspaper and you see free to a good home, is it really free? Is it really mm -hmm. free? Mm -hmm. If you seek the medical care that a responsible pet owner is going to provide, you're going to pay well over 150. Mm -hmm. I don't even think you can get a dog spayed or neutered for 150. Can you, Joni? Um, in some some places. Some areas. Can, yeah, some areas. You can, well, so. it probably depends on the size of the dog too. Yeah, right. What age? Yeah. Right. Right. You know, yeah. having so, it fixed. Right. Um, well, I, I still think it's, it's a, a wonderful program that you guys are doing here. And, um, you know, your adoption fees, I think, are very reasonable. We're, we're extremely and reasonable yeah. in comparison. You, you keep mentioning that it's kitten season. What is it about <laughs> this time of year that makes it kitten yeah. season? Well, you know, people in animal welfare, I guess, you know, yeah, different we, businesses have different lingo. I have to uh, think of the yeah. summer. Yeah. I don't yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and those of us in animal welfare, we go, oh my gosh, it's kitten season. Yeah. And you know, it, at Easter time, we all talk about, uh, you know, oh, spring flowers and baby okay. chicks and the lambs are being born. 
And those of us in animal welfare sit there going, oh my gosh, all the cats are getting pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to start having kittens because just like all yeah. other uh, life is procreating, uh, so are the cats. And so this is the prime time when the season is warm uh, that the cats are going to be on the prowl and they're going to be mating. And What's the gestation period for? Uh, 60 days. Six 63. 63 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We, we have litters that come in where mothers are nursing and they're pregnant. Okay. So, I mean, that's how, that's, you know, right. that's atypical. Right. So. And, and the, sh the shame of it is, is that, you know, when people let their cat out and they're not spayed or neutered, it, it just takes once. Yeah. You know, it just takes once and they're pregnant. And uh, cat kittens can get pregnant as early as four months of age. So <laughs> if you have, oh, if yeah, you have, know, yep, incredible. if you have kittens, if you have a mom who has kittens and you keep all the kittens, then they can, you know, interbreed or, you know, and it kind of gets out of hand. Yeah, very, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. quickly. Very, very quickly. quickly. Yeah. Very quickly. And, you know, when I'm doing education programs at the shelter, I'll I always ask the children, who loves puppies and kitties? Well, of course, we all raise our <laughs> hands. We all love puppies and kitties. And then I ask, who wants to think about puppies and kitties never finding a home? And they all put their hand down. Mm -hmm. And so we need to think about the animals that are already existing. Uh, before we think about bringing more of them into the world. Mm -hmm. uh, let's find homes for all the animals that are currently uh, in existence, and once they're all, all homed and housed, uh, then let's think about you know, having puppies and kittens. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there always will be puppies and kittens because everybody loves them. Uh, but it's, it's the reality that this is the time of year uh, when Kittens are, people are finding them in their wood pile. They're finding them under the porch. Uh, people abandon their animals. If you've ever, I don't know how people can live with a female cat in heat. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know. That sounds like a story in itself. Particularly <laughs> Siamese females. Oh, okay. Loud, the, vocal. The oh, sound yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then both males and females have a tendency to mark territory, mm -hmm. calling a suitor to, mm -hmm. you know, to find them. And it, it's just, you know, and I feel bad for the animals yeah. because yeah. they're acting on instinct. Sure. Uh, it, yep, it's all hormones. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, kitten season, and the longer our summers are, mm -hmm. the longer kitten season is. And mm -hmm. so many times people will come into the shelter in October and November and say, do you have kittens? Well, sometimes we do, but rarely mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll but, tell you, but it's these last later year, and later mm. yep because our our spring is getting later yeah. and later yeah. uh, and so that's why we 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 refer to this as kitten season okay. because that's where when we see the abundance it's also the time of year in Wisconsin that oh the weather's nice i'll let my cat out mm. and in Oshkosh, that that is against the law it correct is. yes it is, it is. Yeah. there is a city ordinance that says there is a leash law for cats as well as dogs. Yeah. Okay. And well, so I think that's a good, important distinction to make because I think far too many people think that that leash law only applies to dogs. Right. Right. Nope. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, Cheryl, I love cats, but when I'm working in my garden, I don't like it when I find that the neighbor's <laughs> cat has used it as their litter box. <laughs> yeah. You know, so not, not everybody, you know, there's a tolerance level. Mm -hmm. uh, and here again, if, you, if you've sought uh, veterinary care for your cat, um, why would you want to leave it outside unattended? Yeah. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, just the other day, I saw a cat that had been hit by a car on one of our main streets here in town, and I thought, oh, that poor kitty, and it had a bandana on, and I thought, somebody obviously loved that mm -hmm. cat, but they let it outside. Yeah. And, and who knows, maybe it escaped outside accidentally, uh, but the best place for your cat is either in the house or if you are going to let it outside, it needs to be on a leash and okay. you need to be with it. All right. One of the things that um, we had talked about when we were scheduling this show was you guys are, are trying to um, develop a, a list of landlords that uh, yes. allow mm -hmm. pets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there aren't many of us who do <laughs> out there. Yeah. Um, uh, and a lot of landlords might allow cats, but not too many allow dogs. Right. 
I'm proud to say I allow anything. I like that. <laughs> but, well, within a reason. I, mean, yeah. as long I was going to say, <laughs> woo! <laughs> She's going to be at all these calls now, you know? <laughs> no, I have no vacancies yeah. right now. Um, but, um, you know, so you're trying to reach out to landlords uh, in, part in of the, the area. Part of the solution. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's part of the solution, but it also, um, you know, you do find, uh, you wouldn't believe the number of calls that I get. You know, oh, uh, from from people who are looking for a place to rent, you know, saying, "Do you allow pets?" and "Do you know of anyone else who does?" When I tell right. them I don't have right. anything available right now, so so you're trying to reach out to the landlords to develop this list so that when someone calls right. and says, "Look, I've got a dog, or I've got a cat, or I've got a rabbit, or whatever the case may be," you know, "Do you know landlords who allow pets?" Mm -hmm. You can refer right. them. To some of these landlords right. so you would like landlords to do what contact you I, absolutely i mean we're in the process of trying to work with it. it it's a little bit more difficult than i thought it was um, as far as just getting a, a group together and, and yes please if if anybody has property and they allow pets you know or any restrictions that they have or even if they don't allow pets you know those are things that we would like to know so that you're right we can compile that list and and um, you know we can we can give that to people so that they know because the number one reason that people surrender pets is because they're moving and their landlords won't allow that's the number one reason yeah yeah and you know you could speak to the fact that why don't landlords allow it well, I think because they feel that there's damage involved. Sure. And I have to say that I have had kids mm -hmm. <laughs> do more damage to a right. property right. over the years than um, probably pets combined. Right. You know, well, and I, I think, too, if when you're renting um, and you have cats, um, there may be some misunderstanding on the part of the landlords. Um, we're in the animal welfare business. We're, we know a lot about behavior. And um, sometimes there's a misunderstanding about cat behavior. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I don't want a cat in my apartment scratching up my woodwork. And chances are, if you ask your tenant to provide proper scratching and or proper number of litter boxes, there shouldn't be any problem. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are some things, some helpful behavioral hints that maybe we could share with landlords that, you know, you can rent to somebody with cats, mm -hmm. but you may want to ask them if you have one cat, you must provide at least two litter boxes. Um, you know, and I don't know how you follow through on that, but to have that knowledge and to know that, oh, okay, I didn't know that about cats. Um, and to give them some information that there are, there are good pet owners out mm -hmm. there. And unfortunately, the bad ones ruin it for everybody sure. else. The person who allows, doesn't clean the litter box, and then their cat soils all over the apartment, uh, condemns cat owners. Yep. It's yeah. the urine smell that yeah. yeah. really yeah. turns. Yeah. For everybody else, yeah. and if that owner had just maybe scooped the box more than once a, a week, yep. um, there wouldn't have been that problem. And so just giving them some additional tools. Not that we're at telling them that, you know, you have to change your policies, but some people might be on the edge that, boy, I get a lot of people that want to rent that have cats, but oh, I don't want to have that problem. We can tell them when some of those problems happen or why they mm -hmm. happen, and then maybe say, you know, I want to see your scratching post, or sure. I want to see your two litter boxes, or, you know, how often do you scoop, mm -hmm. or, you yeah. know, where are you disposing of the litter? Mm -hmm. And, you know, landlords, honestly, can, can build a lot of those things For into sure. their pet addendum, yeah. which becomes part yeah. of the lease. Yeah. You know, and I, I just, I, I mm -hmm. think it is a tremendous tool um, for keeping your, your occupancy level at a decent rate. Yeah. Right. Well, you and I, I thought I had, this was years ago, that people who rent and are allowed to have pets have a tendency to stay yes, absolutely. in their rented property right. longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when they're Just allowed to yeah. allowed to keep their pets, yeah. and so uh, we certainly, you know, just because Joni and I work at the animal shelter, any any of us that work there, we like nice things too. Mm -hmm. We don't want our homes ruined, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so we certainly understand that landlords want to set a criteria, um, but maybe there's some things that we can help them consider, sure, or Absolutely. reconsider when sure. they're adopting to pets. Uh, we're almost out of time here, guys, but real quickly the. Um, the hour goes so fast. I know it does. It really, it really um, does. The, the, you took in 10 dogs from this raid on this animal 15, sanctuary? 15, actually. 15, okay. Mm -hmm. um, from this animal sanctuary in uh, Richland County. Mm -hmm. How are those dogs doing? 
Actually, they're doing quite well. It was surprising because considering what they really, you know, because we had heard after after the fact that um, all the things that they obviously had to uh, live with uh, for the length of time that they were there, they're doing very well. Um, quite social, really coming around. Just it, and you know, there's nothing better. There's nothing better. You get a dog that comes in and they're scared to death and they're just like, they're really unsure of themselves. They don't know what's going on. But you know, like for the first time, they get to run around in a dog park and they get they get dog buddies and they, you know, I mean, they're eating good food. And, and people who, you know, we have wonderful volunteers that really care, you know, that really put the effort into it. So, um, so these guys are like literally blossoming. I mean, just blossoming. That's great. Um, shelter Trek is coming up in September. Mm -hmm. September 12th. Okay. Um, our theme this year is going to be Shelter Trek Goes Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do a little Hollywood stuff. So anybody mm -hmm. who wants to uh, join in the costume contest with their pet, uh, they can be anything Hollywood. You can mm -hmm. be a director. You can be running Johnny the Depp. You know. There you <laughs> go. We can do Public Enemies. Uh, you yeah. can do 101 Dalmatians. There we go. Uh, and, you know, just have some fun with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be at Menominee Park again. It's a morning event. We start at, uh, I think, the activities usually start around 8.30. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have the lure coursing again uh, down there. Uh, I'm just excited that I got the confirmation that the city, again, is going to allow us to use Menominee Park. Um, and this will be our 16th annual mm -hmm. uh, shelter track. Um, and uh, all kinds of information on it is on your website also. Will be on our website. Mm -hmm. um, one thing real quickly, with, with the economy the way it is, are you seeing more animals having to be surrendered because of economic conditions? Absolutely. Yeah, no question mm -hmm. about it. Um, you know, it's interesting. You know, I, I've never, I've never in all the years that I've been doing this, I've never had um, anybody, with the exception of the last year, come to me and say they're foreclosing on my house. Mm. Yeah, that's that's shocking. And people crying and just beside themselves because they have to surrender their animal and unfortunately they got to, you know, maybe they're living with their sister or family member and that type of thing and they've already got pets and it's, you know, a pretty chaotic yeah. thing anyways. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, to bring another animal into that, it's hard. That, that's got to just be terrible. It's, I, it's, I can't it's even imagine what that it's, is like. I, I yeah. can't. I really can't. Yeah. You've lost your home. You've lost your job. And now you have to lose your family mm -hmm. pet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, pretty, it is it is it is hard. Yes. Yeah, so and we're, we're definitely seeing an increase. Okay. And then just, I guess, in closing, you know, besides money, you guys always <laughs> need money, of course. But um, are there, and, and besides volunteers as well, because mm -hmm. you need those. Mm -hmm. we, we need foster homes. Those foster, foster homes foster homes and volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what kinds of supplies do you need right now? Purina kitten chow. Okay. Canned kitten food. We want the food that is specifically canned kitten food okay. uh, for kittens. Um, there's, there's not a lot of brands out there, but we want it to be specifically for kittens. Uh, we can always use litter. Always, yeah. Scoopable yeah. litter. And, uh, and, you know, any of the supplies, because this is the time of the year that we're so busy. So okay. think about your own pet at home and what do you buy them? That's right. what we need. The okay. other thing with our foster homes, we can use some of the smaller sized litter boxes. Mm. Okay. Um, so that we can send that ho with the foster homes okay. to their, um, mm -hmm. so that here again, uh, the more heavy duty litter scoops also. Okay. Uh, All right. So think about what, what would mm -hmm. you need if you had, if you had a pet. All Those right. are the things we need. Very good. Good luck with this. Yes. Oh, thank you guys. Luck. We appreciate it very much. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dan. Yeah. Thanks to the crew. And thanks to all of you at home. We'll see you next time. Until then, take good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.